Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I am a high school computer science teacher. We are talking about how to write loops, and in this case we're going to write a loop based on user input. So here I've already set up a graphical user interface. I've got a title, I've got a text field right here, a text area down here for output, and a button. We are going to set up this um, application so that the user types a number into this field presses the count button and it will print out all the numbers from one up to that number. Um, so we're starting by asking them to enter a whole number. Let's, uh, yeah that's good enough. So I'm going to right click here, choose events, action and action performed. This will, in NetBeans, will fill in uh, the code to give us uh, the stub of a method here. The count button, action performed, what will happen when this button is clicked. So a few things will happen. We're going to get the input number from the uh, from the user. We're going to grab it out of the text field really. I suppose we should write that there. Uh, hopefully they've already typed it in. We're going to verify the number is valid and if it is we will print out uh, the numbers from 1 to, we're going to call it n, so let's say in our comments here get the input number n from the text field. And if it is not valid, then we're, we're going to uh, print an error message for the user. So let's start off here by declaring a variable to hold our integer. Let's call it n. I'm going to start it off by, by setting it equal to 0. If you don't put equals 0 here uh, in Java, n has the value 0 by default. Integers always get the value 0 if you don't assign one. Um, each different type has its own uh, default values and object types have the default value of null. So let's uh, look at this, getting an input number from the text field. Well, a text field does not hold numbers, it holds strings. So we have to convert the string that is stored here into an integer if possible. And that's the trick here, is that it may not be possible, but we're going to try to do it. And if we can, then we will get to go through all these other steps. And if we cannot, if there's a problem, we need to catch that problem. The problem would be a number format exception. I'll come back to this in just a minute. And then if, if there's a problem, we're going to um, uh, tell the user there is an error. Okay, so there is the basic structure of our application. Get the number, verify that it's good, and if it is, we're going to print out a bunch of values. So let's start by getting the input number uh, from the text field. So n is going to be equal to, we use the parse int method from the integer class and in there I'm going to put the string from the text field. My text field is called input field and I have to get its text. There's the method that will grab that text. So here's my input field object. I'm going to call this method get text on it. It returns the string. That string gets sent to the parse int method. The parse int method returns an int which gets stored in my n variable in, in its uh, memory location. So this is essentially converting that string into an integer. Um, so if that number is valid then great. If it's not we're going to tell the user there is an error. We do that by uh, using our output uh, text area it's called output text area dot set text uh, invalid number entered with an exclamation point. Okay, so that's going to, uh, and set text is a method on the, for the text area that will remove any existing text and replace it with, with this string. Okay, so that's, as long as we have a, a, a non number we're going to jump down here. So if we have something that is not an integer, it will go to this uh, catch block and the rest of this try block will not execute. However, it's not the, that's not the only thing that can go wrong. It's possible that we get a number that is uh, negative, for example. And so we want to check to see whether or not that number is negative. If the number is negative, if n is less than zero, I suppose if it's less than one, although I've called it a whole number. so. Maybe I will change that right now, actually. Let's go back to my prompt. Instead of entering a whole number, let's call it a natural number. 
that would be a, like a whole number, except it can't be zero. And there, enter a natural number. That's better. And so it's got to be at least one. Back up to my code. Okay, so if n is less than one, that is if it's zero or smaller, a negative number, then we don't like that either. And rather than using this code again, setting the text in the output text area, I'm just going to make a new number format exception. Throw new number format exception. And uh, that'll be good enough for that. That means when that is thrown, the code will jump, uh, the code execution will jump down here to this catch block and continue from there. Okay, let's just backtrack for a second and make sure we're on the right track. We're going to get the input number from the text field. If that number is not a good number, if it's not a number, we'll, it'll break right here. If it's, if it's not a good number, it'll break right here. Otherwise, we know that we have a number that is at least one and is an integer. And so now I'm going to use a loop. There's lots of kinds of loops, and I like a for loop for something like this. So I'm going to make a new integer. We often use the letter i to represent counters, but I'm going to use the word counter to make it a little, oops, a little clearer right now. For, uh, we're going to start the new integer counter at 1. We are going to continue, as long as this condition, condition is true, the counter has to be less than or equal to n. So when it is equal to n, for example, this will run. And the counter is going to go up by 1 each time. So I can say counter equals counter plus 1. Or the more common way to do that is to write counter plus plus. Uh, that's the increment operator, one of the increment operators. Okay, so let's just review the counters for a second here. We start the counter at 1. We're going to continue running this loop as long as the counter is not bigger than n, if it is less than or equal to n, and then the counter we will increment by 1 each time. When we are um, running through this loop, once, like each time we run through this loop, we want to add one value to what has been printed, uh, what is being printed in the uh, output field, output area, I'm sorry. Whew, okay, let's do it. So output area dot append is the, uh, that's the method for adding to the text field without deleting what's already there. I'm going to append a new line character, and then I'm going to follow that up with the current value of counter. So this, and the first time through, that will be 1. The second time through, that will be 2. I'm going to put a new line at the beginning for us. I'm sorry, I missed the word text here. The first time through, the, the counter will be 1. The time through, it will be 2, 3, 4, and so on. Let's say our number is 5. When counter is equal to 5, this will still be true. We will print out 5 counter will be incremented by 1 to become 6, and then when it checks again, 6 less than or equal to 5 is not true, and the, the loop will stop. The catch block will not execute, and so we'll be all finished there. Now we have one small problem here, well a couple small problems. One problem is that the output text area, if you ran this more than once, it, we never clear it, and so that's actually a bit of a problem. So just before the loop runs, it makes sense to uh, set the text we're going to clear the text out. So by do, I'm just going to put the empty string as the text in the text area. That's immediately before the loop runs so that there is no text there in the way. Um, and there's a little, a few more little small things we can improve on, but we're going to start that. Uh, let's just see how we're doing then. Give this a moment to compile and run. several moments. Now oh, you've been very patient. That's good. Okay, here's our uh, console where we can watch for any exceptions or errors that are not handled. All right, here is our application. I'm going to enter a natural number. Let's start with something easy like 5. 
press count. You can see the extra space at the top. We could have been more careful to handle that. Nice. Let's try six. I notice it has it deletes everything before it continues. Let's try 60. Oh, okay, we got our scroll bar here. That's good. Let's try negative 5. Invalid number. Okay, what about just 0? Also an invalid number. How about 1? That's, that's an edge case. Uh, good, the number 1 is printed, but 2 is not. And potato is an invalid number. Okay, things are looking pretty good. So there are some small improvements to make. We could improve uh, by getting rid of this extra space here at the start. We could improve our interface by, for example, adding a title to this. Um, no other super major things that I can think of off the top of my head that would be big improvements. There are some small efficiency things, for example. You might make this more efficient instead of using a less than or equal to. You could use, you could switch this around and use a greater than. Uh, but this is pretty good. That's a good start for us. So we are Oh, sorry, there is one more thing I wanted to do. I wanted to make it possible for the user to, instead of clicking the button, to just press enter here. And we do that by right-clicking, choosing events, action, action performed on the field itself. And when we go to that uh, mode, rather than rewriting all of this code up here, instead, you can just count, uh, call uh, this method again, and it will run that code right there. I'm pretty sure that's allowed. Um, I'm not super worried event itself. Um, another option is to have a third print, um, which both of these uh, two methods will call. Let me just verify that that's going to work the way I expect it does. Sorry, this video has gone a little longer than I intended. There, I just pressed enter on my keyboard. Enter. There we go. And so the f this way the field can maintain the focus. Um, rather than having to actually go down and click the button down here. Okay, well I hope that is helpful and sorry I was a little bit long-winded this time. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about loop counters and how they work and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks.